Hi, it's Bridget. Welcome to Above Life Channel. The purpose here is to inspire your spirit and to fill you with hope. Today, we're going to have a conversation with Prince in the afterlife. It is Valentine's week, and actually, this video will go up on Monday, Valentine's Day, and so 2022. And so I think I would like to chat with him about love. Hmm. Now, I know I've talked to Prince a lot, right? Because that's why Above Life Channel came to be in the first place, was my connection with him in the afterlife. Yeah, I've been a psychic. I had been a psychic medium for years. I had done intuitive life coaching for years. But when I met Prince in the afterlife, it opened me up to a whole new way of connecting and communicating with the afterlife through celebrity channeling. And so here we are. So there's lots of love for Prince in the afterlife. So I want to share with you, um, this week was my birthday and I was running around and do, going places and doing things. And I got my tattoo. I got a new tattoo. It says hopeful. Can you see that? You go. And I like it. That's nice. And um, I know it's healing really good, isn't it? Yeah. It's not even bumpy or anything. It's perfect. And I was driving and multiple Prince songs came on. Oh, I had Little Red Corvette, which is one of my favorites. Love that song. And um, I Would Die For You and Kiss came on. And I'm trying to think of, oh, 1999 and Let's Go Crazy. Then yesterday, the day after my birthday, I was driving again and <laughs> I was in the car again. And purple rain. That's a big deal. I'm from Minneapolis. Okay. So I live in Minnesota. All right. So it's Prince has always been a really big deal here. And regardless of how he expressed himself and whether you were like into the genre of music or because he had so many different types of music anyway, or the way he dressed or how he danced or whatever, regardless of any of that, like what you felt about that or how you were drawn to it or not, or whatever, he was just an energy that was appreciated here. So there's a lot of love for that. So let's have a conversation with him in the afterlife. First, I want to say thank you, my friend, for, uh, for all the music on my birthday. Thank you for that. I think it's really sweet. So yes. Okay. So let's talk about love. So where do you want to go with this? Now, I know that in some of the channeling we've done before, we have talked about, I think I've talked about soulmates and twin flames with you. I'm not sure. I get a lot of questions about that. That's a good thing. Can you talk to us about the difference between a soulmate and a twin flame? Can you talk to us about that? I mean, that's to do with love, right? You guys, relationships, love, same diff. Okay, very different, but can you talk to us about that? Soulmate, twin flame, what's the difference? It's like, wow, you just get, you just, just, just jump right in there, Bridget. Just, just jump right in. Yeah, no kidding. So he says, okay. So your soul has, your soul has had many lifetimes, he says. He says it's like many orbits around the sun. Many orbits. There's some kind of a, He's showing me circles and the sun, the solar energy. Oh, that was for me. Oh, okay. Oh. Little happy birthday vibe and a little divine masculine energy with that solar energy. That was just a sweet, that was an image, a sweet gift for me. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you. Thanks for that. Yeah, that was really sweet. Okay. So he says solar mates. <laughs> okay. Light. He says the light part of you, the light body of you, the part of you that you would say is your soul or the spirit of you. That is what soulmate connection is about he says it's about the desire for the need to reconnect it's not the first time connection 
that soulmate brings forward. It's the energy of the reconnection. And he's getting real kind of quiet, mm -hmm. real kind of quiet with his voice. It's deeply personal. And it can be very confusing. He says it can be conflicted. So your soulmate can reincarnate, he says, in a body that you might not expect. So if you're looking for a traditional heterosexual kind of relationship, man, woman kind of relationship, you may be surprised that you will be drawn to others in different ways, he says. And this is, a, this is what the unconditioning of the love is. We've talked about this before, unconditioning of love. You guys have talked about that before. I think I've talked about it on here on Above Life. Have I talked to about Above Life channel about the unconditioning of love? I think I did it on a podcast, I think, Sunday morning coffee podcast. And he says, um, it's not typical. Love shows up in different forms and forums. He says, like music different vibrations, frequency, that's just energy, music is energy. People, he says, music is energy, you know that. He says, I don't need to tell you, I don't need to school you, he says about that. There's a lot of misinformation, misunderstanding about what soulmate is. Okay, it's really hard because he's talking really low, very kind of almost sensual, and his voice, because I can hear him auditory, auditorily right now. And it's hard to do that. I hope it's capturing on the mic. I'm trying to get close so you guys can hear the tones that he's using. It's very calming and peaceful, rejuvenating. He says, like spa-like. The form that your soulmate may show up in, may arrive in, could be your child. It could be a friend, a neighbor, a coworker, could be a parent, a sibling. Doesn't have to be romantic love or the desirous, passionate, very physical kind of love that you think of when you think of Valentine's Day and romance. A partner doesn't have to be someone you are sleeping with. It can be a embodiment of love through that light body of a soul that comes into your life to support you or give to you in some way, to gift to you. So a soulmate doesn't necessarily give you a hard life lesson or it's not something that like, it's not intended to be like this, here's your message, here's your lesson kind of a thing and then they move on. No, he said, um, it's, it's energy. It really depends on what the, the need is between the souls. There is a sort of an agreement. He's saying agreement, but it's not quite the right word. There is a, a magnetic understanding as to how the two will unite, reunite in this lifetime. And in order to serve the purpose for the highest, for whichever soul is gifting, and whichever soul is receiving. So there's a give and a receive. So it's not necessarily balanced. Soulmate relationships are not necessarily balanced. Exactly. They're not. This is why it's, it's difficult. This is why people, people romanticize about soulmates. And yet there is a, a lesson often, there is often an imbalance in the energy or the connection. However, that can be worked through. You can move through whatever past agreements. Um, some might refer to it as karma. And he says, I, 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 he doesn't want to necessarily use the word karma because it's misunderstood. The word karma is misunderstood, he says. It's more of an understanding the balancing of things really is what it is. It's not a payback or a punishment or a reward. It's not reward punishment. It's not consequential. It is really just an understanding of balancing and alignment. And he says, it's not as dramatic as it sounds. Karma is not as dramatic as it sounds. Soulmates are not as dramatic as it sounds. He says, we very much romanticize in the human life soulmate. What it really means is I see you, I know you. 
no matter how much actual human time has passed, there's no time when you meet uh, someone who is housing your light soul, the light energy of love that you've held in other lifetimes, you will recognize that. And it just means I love you, I see you, I know you. It might not be expressed through love or physical love, but in some relationship and, and some interaction, it will be known. There will be a value that is honored, recognized, a value that is recognized and honored. He said, recognized and honored. Those two pieces have to be in play in order for it to be a soulmate. Recognized and honored. So a soulmate can't come into your life and treat you like crap. Oh no, he says, I didn't say that. I didn't say that. Hmm. The person who is housing the light body for which you know and recognize as a soulmate for you may not be conscious of the connection. This is where it gets hard, he says. This is where it gets hard. Both souls may not recognize the other. So it may feel very one-sided, which is why there's definitely a giver and a receiver or the one who recognizes and the one who is recognized. And he says, in time, if there is a relationship that develops or a longer term situation in which these two spirits are inter intertwined, interwoven into their lives in some way, it could be at work, it could be friendship or siblings or parents or, or romantic love, it could be that. If there's opportunity for them to work and, and be around one another, work in, in different ways together in and out of each other's energy fields, then there will be reflection recognition that will occur. So there'll be a reflection back to that person who will feel then receive. They may not have a conscious memory of the actual soulmate connection, but they will feel a very pure light form of what love is, which comes through acceptance and feeling like you've really been seen. And that is really about acceptance and belonging and, and a, a part of kind of worthiness, he says. Wow, that's a big deal. Okay, this is very philosophical. I love Prince when he's philosophical. I love him when he's freaking intelligent. And he does that from a high ascended. I usually see a purple pyramid Yes, like the pyramid skylights at Paisley Park when he's talking like this, because it's very ascended, ascension, and very galactic, astral star-like, um, advanced healing technologies, advanced awareness and understanding, very philosophical professor like so. Okay. So can you talk to us then about twin flame? What does that mean? And how is that, how does that affect us as people? And, and how's it different than soulmate? Can you talk about that? Yes. Okay. Shows me the swans, which is my symbol for twin flame, the swans coming together. Twin flame. So the fire element, yes, that is, that is something, yes, please talk about that. So the fire element, fire can be misunderstood, misused, and misinterpreted. Fire can be used to destroy things. Fire can be used for clearing and purification. Fire can be used for heat, light, food. It can be used in many ways, it can also be misused in many ways, right? So twin flame is two. It's like, um, he says, think about like babies in the womb. They're two, they're sharing the same space. They come from the same center core. So a twin flame is knowing another person is, is the, is the um, oh, so is this like the other half piece? Like where the term better half or other half comes from? Yes, in part, it could be. But he's saying that it's about, um, it's an intuition. It's, it's a, we're both energies, both of the spirit energies, the souls know that there is this unima unimaginable uh, magnetic pull to one another. They're, they are so magnetically sealed that it, to be apart feels like incredible, incredible pain. Okay, so that doesn't sound good. So we've got the alchemy of the fire and now we have magnetizing where when you feel separate, you feel like you're dying. Okay, that doesn't, that does, neither one of those things sound very appealing or attractive to twin flame energy. He says, well, it's not. 
It's not. He says, as much ra- I'd much rather recommend you exploring the soulmate piece versus the twin flame because it, it's a, it can be very difficult. Yeah, he says it can be very difficult. He says, but there's a depth of alchemy that occurs between the twin flame where in which there's a recognition of the oneness, the one, which in part is the creator, source, God. These two souls were created together in the inception of soul of light and the separation only occurs because why does the separation occur because of a forced need to add in additional creations is what it feels like they're, they have to be forced apart so that one of them can succeed in additional creations. It's almost like um, multiplying, like having children or like in a human body, it'd be like one of them has to have kids. Um, but why not both of them? No, they both have paths. He says, but really there is one of them that is, it's almost like there's one that's a, not dominant, but like a, a stronger isn't the right word, but there's one that it's like the twin flame. One of them sacrifices. No, 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 no. These aren't the right words. You guys, one of them has more of a, almost like an introverted, um, they have very different lives. They're like opposites. And yet they recognize the opposite in each other and understand that there's a sameness at their core that it's almost like they trigger each other. Like they show up the shadow in each other, but when they can come together and be together and merge, merge, reseal, that is when the light is expanded. That is when the love comes and grows here, but it's the separation piece that is extremely painful. And wherein there's this feeling of unsettledness and never quite feeling right. He says, much like how um, twins, actual twins feel, like you kind of get intuition about each other and that kind of thing. So our twin flames, it it seems painful and difficult. He says, uh, it's an advanced healing journey. He says, it's an advanced healing journey. The concept of twin flames, advanced healing journey, he says. and they literally, he says, fulfill in each other the places in which there is need. So when they are together, they're fully together, there's a perfection that comes that is divine, that is through the union, that is transcendent, which is a very high vibrational experience. And so so People seem to confuse, he's showing me the relationship piece of soulmates and twin flames. So are twin flames like siblings? And no, he says, no. Um, Not likely, no. So is twin flame like a parent and child? What? No, it's much more. He says, it's literally like your heart in half in two. He says, so it's like... um, He's really, I'm really feeling romantic relationship. I'm really feeling the experience of being in oneness or union in the body, as well as the heart and the soul and the, and the mind, the understanding, but the mind is triggered very much by the whole concept of twin flame. And that's why they trigger each other and they can fight a lot, or it could be, you know, challenging and dramatic and, and seem like they're just giving each other lessons. And it's a hard life to have with the twin flame connection together but the soul connection allows for advancement it spiritually and in an incredibly rap at an incredibly rapid pace and he says it's a very soulful healing journey for twin flames so is it possible to do twin flame work if you don't meet your twin flame and is there only one and he's looking he's like okay so i've seen three or four That's all I've seen. Like the most he's saying, the most he's seen is four, four parts. So it would be twin and then quad basically is all what he's showing me. Um, 
but it makes more sense to think about this in terms of just two people and, and very much like uh, could express in a romantic relationship. But just because there's twin flame, they're twin flames doesn't mean they're going to stay together. It doesn't mean there's a permanent sea. It doesn't mean there's a, a, a fate or destiny that they have to be together or be in a marriage or a relationship or whatever it might be. Um, it could be very difficult for that to, to occur in a human context. So he's saying, actually, you can meet your twin flame, or at least one of them, if you have, yeah, he literally shows me up to four and that's it. Like, I don't see any more. Oh, this is really big. And, and just to have one is more than enough. So does everybody have a twin flame? And he says, no, no, because it's a different soul code. It's a different code of the soul, a coding encodement of the soul. It's different. Not everybody needs that. Okay. Not everybody wants that. It's just not a, it's just not how it works. So it's unique. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's pretty unique actually. Yes. 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 Um, because it's hard. <laughs> he says, it's not easy work. Okay. All right. It's not roses and cherries, you guys. It's not all soft and gentle. And then I hear right away, my higher self, my oversoul says, but it's worth it. It's worth it. If you're willing to navigate that, if you have a twin flame that has entered into your life or into your awareness to navigate that, if you're willing to navigate that, it can be exponentially amazing for you. So we can meet our twin flame, like in a meditation. I should do a meditation for that. Shouldn't I? Ooh, that would be interesting. Maybe I should do that Sunday morning coffee. What do you guys think? So what is the benefit then to knowing or meeting our twin flame, or even if we do it metaphysically? He says to feel whole. If you're unsettled, if you're missing something in your life, if you try all these things and you can't seem to be happy, this might be why. He said it might be the reason why. And so you can feel a union or reunion that will give you a, a deeper sense of wholeness and peace. It's not about love, you guys. It's like this peacefulness about being whole and at peace. Whole and at peace is the goal and the journey for a twin flame. Wholeness and at being at peace is the purpose and journey of the journey for the twin flame. So if you've embarked on this, this is in part of what you're desiring body, heart, soul, and then finally, the mind. So, all right. Wow. <sighs> Mind blowing. So this is with Prince Rogers Nelson in the afterlife. I'm Bridget. It's nice to have you here on Above Life channel on YouTube. Check out the playlist for Prince and make sure you show up every Monday for a new channeling session with an afterlife celebrity guest. If you're interested in working with me privately, check out abovelifechannel.com or go ahead and just go to my Facebook page, Bridget Inspired, and click on the book button so you can book a private session with me. I also do group work and I have some other kinds of services that you can, um, you can uh, experience if you choose to do that. I'm also an intuitive life coach in addition to a psychic medium. You can find me on my other YouTube channel, my more vlogging channel, where I talk about intuitive topics and share stuff about my psychic life at Fairy Grasshopper. That's Fairy grasshopper on YouTube. Follow me on social media, Bridget Inspired on Instagram and Bridget Inspired on Facebook as well. Links are below. All right. Thanks so much for being here. I hope that Prince and I have inspired your spirit and filled you with hope. Talking about soulmates and twin flames today. I think it's a timely topic. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Thanks for being here.